And let me let you know something. When I put this on the shirt, I don't want to just put it on the shirt just to have something to say. I was actually at my eye doctor when I thought of this theme. I was at my eye doctor in, in Homer, his Christian brother, Dr. Keith Kellum. And uh, a long story made short, I had to go and get these glasses. And while I'm on the parking lot, I started thinking about the theme for 2017. And I wanted to put on his word, my eyes lean, but it's hard to draw eyes. So I came up with just the word I. On his word, I lean in 2017 because I believe it's a challenge to the Christians to lean more heavy on his word than ever before. To know what his word says, to know how it applies to our life. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, some statements that the word, word of God makes about itself. By the way, the word of God is its own defense. It doesn't need you to defend it. You and I don't need to defend the word of God. The word of God stands alone. And the word of God is its own defense. The word of God says for itself, one of the statements it makes is, for the word of God is what? Quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know nothing that quick and powerful. How many of you ever took Excedrin or some kind of pain reliever and it don't work that quick? The word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. You want to know how powerful it is? Piercing asunder, what? The soul, the spirit, the joints, and the marrow. And as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of your heart. I thank God that God's word is able to discern everybody's heart. By the way, everybody's heart is open before God tonight. You can't hide from God. You might hide from this. You might hide from that. Adam and Eve tried to hide. Can't hide from God. And you can't hide from the word. How many of you ever read the word and you said, ouch? Come on, you lie, you fry. You're in church. You start reading the word and you say, oh, man, that hurt. Because the word of God is quick. It's powerful. It's a sword. It's a sword. But let me let you know something to the believer. And majority of people on a Wednesday night are believers. To the believer, the word of God is comfort. The word of God encourages. The word of God strengthens. To an unbeliever, the word of God judges. The word of God will bring judgment. I know because I worked on the, on the workforce for Gulf State Utilities for 17 years. You ever run across people and you start sharing the word, they say, don't judge me. I, I didn't judge you. The word, the word spoke. To an unbeliever, the word judges. To a believer, it brings comfort. It brings encouragement. But the word of God has statements about itself. It stands by itself. God can make these statements about his word. When the book, the writer of Hebrew wrote, the word of God is quick, it made statements about itself. And I'm thankful that the word of God is something I can trust in. I mean, Brandon just said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And he's not talking about your heart that's pumping blood into your body. Trust in the Lord with all your being, with everything that's inside you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. You know, I had to walk through that on trusting the Lord with all your heart. We, had a, we have an office with Interfaith. They've donated an office to us for the past 22 years. And about three months ago, they came to us. The brother told me, he says, uh, Brother Russell, uh, I got some uh, bad news. We sold the building. So you're going to have to move. Now, for 22 years, we've been having an office for free. I mean, you know, offices cost. <laughs> I mean, you go look for office today, it costs. I don't want my money to go to a building, to be honest with you. I'd like for it to go into missions, the mission that the Lord has called us to. So I'm praying, and I'll be honest with you. There were times where I was sweating. But Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, would come alive in my heart. Trust in the Lord. There'd be at times at night to where, because I have a staff now and we work in the office now, uh, there'd be times at night to where I was wondering, where are we going, Lord? Anybody ever been there? Come on, you lie, you fry. You in church? You ever been worried about some things? 
And I was there at night. I was praying. I was praying. And the word of God would bring comfort. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not unto your own understanding. Because you know what my understanding was doing? Was trying to figure out a way how I'm going to get it for free. Come on, let's get real. (laughs) And trying to figure out a way how I'm going to make it happen. He didn't want me to figure out a way how I'm going to make it happen. He wanted me to trust in him and lean on him. And I, that, that word became so comforting to me. It's three days before we got to move out. We got to move all the furniture. I don't know where we're moving the furniture. I think maybe, I, I don't know, front yard or something. We got a garage sale. I mean, I don't know what we're going to do. But three days before the, we, we getting ready to move out, a brother called me and he said, Brother Russell, I heard you're looking for an office. I want to donate some office space to you. Yeah, I thank God for that. You know, uh, once again, I'd have paid if I'd have had to. But I thank God that God provided. But he brought comfort. He brought encouragement. And let me let you know something. He's no respecter of persons. If you're going through something tonight and you feel like maybe worry is controlling your life, the Word of God says this about itself. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Some people are without jobs in the state of Louisiana, and Louisiana's been hit hard. I want to encourage the Christians. God sees exactly where you are. I was without a job when they came to my department and said, you got two weeks, you get out. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know where the Lord would be taking me, but 22 years later, I thank God for the journey. And I worked for a company that was secure. I worked for a company for four weeks vacation a year. Money was good. Everything was good. And it shuts down in two weeks. Where am I going? I thank God his word still stands. Trust in the Lord, church, with all your heart. And lean not unto your own understanding. The rest of that scripture says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he'll direct your path. There's a lot of scripture that, I mean, there's a lot of things that the word says about itself. And I'm going to try to be brief tonight. I know uh, I got to be careful. I can't overshoot the runway. I could camp out in a lot of them. But these are some of the things that, and you'll see it on the left side of the shirt. By the way, this shirt, we're believing God that 2,200 volunteers will wear this. Now you say, uh, you know, man, 2,200 volunteers. Yeah, we're looking at, you know, having them go into the prisons. But one of the things I did was I asked Stacy. I said, Stace, she's our designer. She's our videographer in the ministry. She's the one that put that video together. I said, Stace, she's also my daughter. She's got three of my grandkids. Uh, but she, uh, I, I said, Stace, I said, send me some scriptures on the shirt, scriptures that I don't know because I wanted to challenge my mind. Some of them she sent me I know, but some of them she sent me I didn't know. And then I asked her, I said, we usually put it on the front. I said, put it on the back. The reason why I want it on the back, how many of you ever stood in a grocery line and you start reading somebody's shirt? I want people to read the word. You know, I, and I've already had the comments. People have asked, what's, what's, what's that? <laughs> I actually had one lady say, well, what's that? I, I never saw that. That's, that's a group or something? And I said, oh, yeah, it's a big group. It's called the body of Christ. <laughs> it's big. <laughs> but I was able to share, and that's why I wanted them back. I, I, wanted, I want the gospel to share. And then we get into prisons, and we, in, we all was in a food line. And uh, I want, you look, there are many inmates that are serving the Lord. But I want inmates to know that they can lean on his word. And we can lean heavy. There's some, there's some more scriptures on here, and I would ask maybe some of you to say some of them. Maybe some, some of you see there that's your perfect scripture. Uh, Psalm 119, verse 105, what the, the word says this about itself. It says, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And the psalmist was letting, speaking to himself. He also spoke to himself in Psalm 103. You know, it's good that you speak to yourself. It's something if you speak back, then you're in trouble. But, you know, David said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And he used two words, lamp and light. A lamp is no good unless it's lit. And by the way, David did not have a lamp with batteries. 
Hey, we had a lamp with oil. He said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I read that word, I have to ask myself, is the lamp lit? Or is it just a lamp? You have a pretty Bible that sits on a coffee table that never gets lit. Do we have a pretty Bible that we just bring to church that we never open up? Is the lamp lit? It's quiet in here, but I'm going to preach it anyway. I believe church more than us to have a pretty Bible. For that word to be a lamp unto our feet, it needs to be lit. A lamp that's not lit, you're still walking in darkness. And by the way, that lamp was not a lamp that illuminated the whole path. That lamp was a lamp that illuminated step by step. It's a daily walk. It's not something that illuminates the whole path and you say, okay, I'm good for 10 years. No, I believe that we need to die daily. How many of you, it's tough to die daily sometimes to read the word? Come on, be real. You're in church. When it's tough, when it's, when it's time to read the word, you got to die to sell because you got to spend some time in the word. The word of God is not something that we're to take lightly. By the way, it's a sword. It's a, it's also a sword. It's a weapon against an enemy. And there's an enemy that's on the attack every time. And by the way, that sword is not a wielding sword. It's a sharp dagger. Let you know how close the enemy is. Enemy's close. When Paul said that the, that the word of God was a sword of the spirit, he said, it's a sharp dagger. David said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. It's something that I walk in daily, step by step. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. There's some other scriptures it says about itself. And, and I'm having to, I, I could go into Matthew chapter 6. I could talk about a lot of things tonight. John chapter seven, 17 verse 7 says, Sanctify them in thy truth. Thy word is what? And by the way, his word and only his word is truth. You know, Brother Brandon, Pastor Scott, uh, Brother Roseberry, other Christians might preach, and a lot of things we say is truth, but we're not the Word of God. The only thing that is truth is the Word of God. Jesus said, sanctify them in thy truth. Thy Word is truth. You want to debate with people today? Don't try to debate with theory. Don't try to talk to somebody about a book. Debate about the truth. Jesus said, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I don't know, maybe tonight, maybe you need to be free from some things. Well, the Word of God can free you. The Word of God can free any captive. Maybe you're dealing with fear. Maybe you're dealing with anxiety. Maybe you're dealing with some issues in the home. Maybe you're dealing with some issues on the job site, issues in life. Jesus said, sanctify them in thy truth, thy word. It's truth. And I could teach a while on sanctification. That word sanctification means set apart for a blessing. Jesus was making that statement about himself. Because Jesus is truth. He said, Se separate me for a blessing, Lord. Your word is truth. He makes a strong statement about the word of God. Now this scripture here, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know it. I was the beginning of the year. I, I'd heard about it. I'd heard people preach on it. But Jeremiah 23, verse 29. Anybody know what that says? You get $100. No. Jeremiah 23, verse 29. God speaks to the prophet. And the God tells the prophet, Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a rock that break, like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces? How many of you Frenchmen here? How many of you Ted Dieu? <laughs> That's a hard head. How many of you sometimes you need a hammer to get your attention? Two by four. <laughs> God, sometimes I need something to break off the stuff that tries to hang around. But you know, one of the things he was dealing with with the prophet, the prophet was, uh, God was dealing with the prophet because what was happening was a lot of people were saying, thus saith the Lord. God's saying this, God's saying this, God's saying this, and nothing was coming to pass. 
And God made a statement about himself, about his word. And he said, when my word comes out, and you can find it in Isaiah 55, verse 11, when I send my word out, it's going to accomplish what I desire to accomplish. By the way, God's not a God that he will lie. But there are a lot of prophets saying, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord, and God ain't said nothing. And God had to make a statement about his own word. And God had to say, my word, is it not like fire? How many of you need some trash burned out of you? Some garbage. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord? And like a, ro- a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces? I don't know about you, but that's encouraging to me to know that I can trust in his word. Because there are some things that I need God to break off in my life. Sometimes we hang on to stuff too long. And God wants us to be rid of them. And it don't have to be big sinful stuff. It could be doubt. I hung on to fear. I'll be honest with you. For about five years, I was at First Assembly of God. And I was fearful. I was going to the prison. I was going to the prison. But I never preached before a crowd. Larry would ask him, Brother, why don't you preach? Why don't you preach? You know, and I used to tell Larry, I said, well, Larry, whenever the Lord moves, the Lord was moving, but I wouldn't. Fear will paralyze you. And I thank God for his word that the Bible says, pray ye one for another that you may be healed. And that night when I heard that word, it was like, if you will, a hammer that broke the rocks. I'll never forget Al Marks. Al Marks came to the, to the altar, and I just told Brother Al, I said, Brother Al, I'll be honest with you, I, I got fear, and I need prayer. And his prayer was, God, remove the fear, and boom. <laughs> remove the fear. God, would you send your word and destroy fear? Perfect love will cast out fear. When he said those words, it was like done. And my wife said, you ain't shut up since. And I thank God for the calling. Verse 9 of uh, Psalm 19, 8 says, The precept of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. I wish I could preach on them all, but it's statements that the word says for itself, and I could preach on them all, but time doesn't allow me tonight. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says, All scripture is inspired by God. By the way, 66 books is inspired by God. And I thank God that God inspired him. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable. It's profitable for teaching, for instruction. Why? That the man of God may be thoroughly furnished and equipped to all good works. The scripture says a lot about itself. In some, in, in, um, well, let, let, let me let you know, in 2 Timothy 4.2, once we know that the word of God stands alone, stands by itself, speaks for itself, I believe God has given us a responsibility. I believe God has given us a responsibility not just to hear the word, believe the word. I tell people all the time, we need HBO in the church. We need hearers, believers, and obeyers. One thing to hear the message. Another thing to believe the message. How many of you sometimes have a hard time obeying the message? Come on, let's be real. I'll be be honest with you. To obey going into a a prison? (laughs) I I didn't want to obey that. I wanted to run from that. Obey going to see inmates? I don't have a clue about inmates. But when I heard Jesus was in prison, I said, Jesus, wherever you are, I want to be. I don't know how I'm going to do this. But I'm going to obey you. I'll never forget, I went to Pastor King, and I told Pastor King, who was my pastor I sat under for years, I went to him and I said, I really feel God told me to take prison ministry off your shoulders. And he was the kind of man, and he didn't tata you much. And he looked at me and he said, uh, you sure God told you to take prison ministry off my shoulders? I said, yes, sir. He said, show up tomorrow morning, we go going to the jail. You know, it's one thing to hear it, one thing to believe it, now I gotta obey it. And that man walked me up seven flights of stairs at the old prison. Sixty-six years old. That man wore me out. 
But I thank God for his leadership. We have a responsibility, church, once we hear it, once we believe it. God, would you help me obey it? Would you help me put some things aside that I would obey you? To obey is greater than sacrifice. What we're called to do in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, says, Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, <laughs> exhort with all long suffering and teaching. By the way, he's telling it to a young pastor. Pastor that probably might have taught, thought at some time to throw in the towel. Brandon, you ever thought of throwing in the towel? Yeah. You know, young pastor sometimes, you know, and I can imagine with Timothy. Timothy didn't have a wife, by the way. And Paul had to tell him, flee fornication. Get rid of, get, get away from them women. <laughs> Run, boy. He had to encourage him all the time. And he had to tell Timothy, he said, Timothy, preach the word. Don't preach a love story. Preach the word. The word is what is a lamp under your feet. The word is what convicts. The word is what saves. How many of you got saved because of the word? <laughs> you know, somebody preached the word and you said, man, I, by the way, Jesus saves. <laughs> Jesus is the word. <laughs> he was the word made flesh. In James chapter 1, verse 22, and that was the first message I preached when, I, when the fear broke. I preached my first message in Hunt Correctional Center. James 1, 22 said, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Once again, HBO. Don't just hear it, believe it, obey it. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Let me give a warning to anybody that's just hearing the word and believing the word and not doing it. The devil's laughing at you. And he's having a party. He loves people to just come to church and be religious and not do nothing for God's kingdom. He loves it. He's laughing at you. The Bible says you're deceiving your own self. When James preached that, James preached that to people that were not really obeying the word. He called us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. When you feel the convicted by God that you're to do something in the word, obey the Lord. I wish I could camp out right there. I got to go. The last scripture I want to share, and I'm, you're probably saying, thank God. He's done. Psalm 119, verse 30, and I'm wrapping up. The unfolding of your word gives light to the eyes. It makes wise the simple. Let me be pretty simple. But you know what he calls us to do? He gives us a responsibility. Unpack the word. Unfold the word. Spend some time in the word. By the way, the word is a gift in our life. How many of you taking time to unpack it? It's a gift. It's a gift God gave us. God, would you help me unpack the word? I have a responsibility. To take the word and not just read it. By the way, just reading the word makes you a Pharisee. I know because I was one of them. When I first got saved, I was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. Didn't study the word, but read a lot of it. It only hurt a lot of people. When you start unfolding the word, you start really seeing God's heart. And understanding what he wants you to do. As a matter of fact, a simple man can tell people how to come to Christ, and you don't have to be a brainiac in college. A simple man can share stories out of the Word that will cause people to want to believe in one true God. You don't have to be somebody that had to go to 20 years of college. Not many wise, not many mighty are called. And I thank God that he called the simple. But he you become simple as you unpack the word and start, God, show me what John 3.16 says. God, show me what some of these scriptures say. I've asked the Lord, God, challenge me more to learn your word. This mind at 62 years old would like to stay stale. I've asked God, God, teach me how to meditate on your word. 
Because people need your word today more than anything. We live in a dark world. And we need your word. Your word is a lamp into our feet. And a light into our path. I don't know where you are in life. By the way, Brother Russell doesn't say, buy your heads, close your eyes, nobody looking around. I go to prison. If you buy your head and close your eyes in a prison, you don't know what's missing when you pick your head up again. It's a real inmates. You know, so, you know, I, I just let people know. Just be real with God. God, I, I want to know more of your word. Maybe you don't know Christ tonight. Maybe you've come to church and you've been searching. Maybe you've, you've you know, I don't know, you're on the job site and you've got all kinds of questions and nobody's giving you the answers. I don't know where you are. But if you need prayer tonight, I believe the Lord wants to minister. If you need to come to Christ, I'm just going to ask you, come and meet me up front. I'd like to pray with you. Uh, if you want and you say, I'm a Christian, but how many of you could learn more of the Word? How many of you could lean more on the Word? I want you to do something tonight. You know, don't go around the church unless you want to go to some groups that you know in the, in the body. But on the pew that you're on, find some people, five, six people right now as we close in prayer. And let's pray for one another. Would you stand? Would you stand and go ahead and find some people? If you, one that you said, I'm a little embarrassed, uh, I don't know how to pray, then somebody go and meet those people that are not praying. Let's, let's, let's turn this next few minutes into a prayer meeting. This ask God to minister the word. And if you know the word and somebody has some issues, pray the word with them. Pray God's word that God's word would minister to them. Go and find some people right now. If you've got to look around, they're not at your pew. Go and find some people right now to pray with them. Encourage them. If you need to come to know Jesus and you say, I don't know Jesus, Brother Russell. Would you pray with me? If you don't want to come up front here, ask somebody in your pew to pray with you. The Bible says pray one for another that you may be healed. Father, we thank you tonight for your goodness and your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord God, for your blessings, your mercy. God, we thank you for your word, God. Your word is quick. It is powerful. It's life-giving. Thank you for your word tonight, Lord. God speaks life into people's lives. God, there may be others, Lord God, that are going through struggle after struggle. Minister, Lord God, by your word. There may be some tonight, Father God, that God don't understand where they are in life. Maybe they need to come to the Savior. Need to come to know who Jesus is. Father, reveal the word tonight in people's hearts. I thank you, Father God, that your word, Lord God, God will lead them and guide them in life. God, as they open up the lamp, search the scriptures. God, the scriptures testify of Jesus Christ. I thank you for ministering, Lord God. God, I pray, Lord God, for the body of Christ, that, God, we would be challenged more than ever to lean on your word, to spend time in your word. God, to, Lord God, allow your word to penetrate into our lives. Change us, God. Change us, Father. God, let us not stay stale. Let us not stay in the same place. Allow your word, Lord God, that was according to Scripture, to dwell in us richly. Father God, let it be planted, Lord God. God, in soil, Lord God, that, God, we've toiled. God, we've removed the junk to allow your word to penetrate our minds, to penetrate our life, to penetrate our understanding, to penetrate our thought life, Father. God, be with us, Lord. As we leave tonight, challenge us. To not just hear, believe, challenge us to obey, to do what you've called us to do, to accomplish your divine will. And we'll be thankful to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.